All right, now just to wrap this tutorial up, I want to talk about mixing because after we record everything and edit everything, now it's time to mix. All right, I talked about sends before, but not in too much detail. I'm going to bring that back up right here. So when you're thinking about routing audio, you want to choose between do you want to do signals in parallel or serial, meaning do I want this original sound to come out of both this track and my send, or do I want my send to manipulate all the information? That's up to you. That's your choice. For this, I'm going to show you both ways. So I'm going to do the send right here. And actually, the first thing I need to do is make a new track. I'll make a stereo track. And we'll do auxiliary input. And then what I'm going to do is change my input here to bus 3-4. It could be any of them, but I'll do 3-4 just to make things easy. And what I'm going to do is on here where it says sends, click that. And then my output, I'm sorry, my bus will be 3-4. And the one that's activated is in orange. And then what I'm going to do is hold alt and click the fader because I want to send the entire signal out of there and you'll see what I'm going to do in a second. So for right now I'm going to mute aux1 and just play this. And I'm going to unmute aux1. And the volume increase because now, right now, we are sending the signal through both tracks. But let's say I don't want to do that. Let's say I just want this to go through the bus. So at this point, what you want to do is get rid of this bus, right click it. I'm sorry, left click it and then go to no send. And then instead of using a send, I'm going to go to my output here and change this to bus 3-4. And now the signal is only being routed through the auxiliary. What this allows us to do is not worry about anything being changed here. And you know, this works well for like drums. I'll typically send drums through a drum bus so that I can control the entire drum level through one track. I'll go to the edit, edit window. And so let me show you what I mean by that. So right now I just have the keyboard going through there. And I'm going to drop the fader on aux1. We could also make a regular track a bus input. Let me do that for you. And I'll show you why that's important in a second. So this is actually going to be bus 1-2. And then I'll flip this one to bus one, two. This is why I want to do it. I can actually record other tracks as if this was a recording device. And that allows me to record a bunch of tracks into one track and then I can disable their effects to save on CPU. It's a way to bounce tracks within Pro Tools. Now, the only thing is, it can only do it at real time, but it works, it works well, and it's one thing that I think is very interesting about Pro Tools. So, I'll go to the beginning and actually get rid of all these repeats because this is just a waste of time. Um, hit record and then hit play, and it'll play through this. Okay, so now my track can be muted here and I can actually either bypass or make this inactive. 
Or make, but I could do both, I guess. So yeah, now I can hit this, hit play. And this is an audio file instead of a MIDI file, right? Isn't that cool? If you want to add a plugin preset, I'll add a plugin so we can see that. It's really simple. Under preset, where it says factory default, these are all your presets, your normal presets, all right? Well, if you want to add one for yourself, left click right here and go to save settings as, and then just save it. That's it. If you want to open up multiple plugin windows, because you've probably been wondering how the hell do I do that, right? Well, first of all, let's make this active. Well, it's really simple. I'm going to anchor this over here. And this button, this red button, click that. And then we can click the next plugin. And now both of them are open. It's that simple. And if you want to anchor this one, you know, you find a spot for it, click that. Make a new insert. Do an EQ. Now we'll do a reverb. And then we can anchor that one if we want. You know, so that's how you do it. You click this red button called the target button. And then if you want to get rid of them, just hit X and they are reset. To duplicate a plugin, you hold Alt and drag that plugin. We can drag that, let's say, mm, Alt and drag this one down to the MIDI track. And I think you can even do a, yeah, you can make another copy right in the original track. So if I wanted two of these for some reason, I can do that. So, let's mix this down. Go to File, Export, Audio Mix. And then we have our options here. I like Wave. You can also do AIFF. Interleaved is what you normally want for a stereo mix down. But if for some reason you want these other options, they're there for you. Bit Depth, eh, it all depends. It all depends on what my final destination is, but 32-bit floating point is good. Uh, well, it's the, it's the best option, but it might be overkill. 24-bit is really all you need, but keep it 32 if you're going to be manipulating it any further, like for mastering or something like that. Sample rate, may as well keep it at the project setting. And then the file name can be whatever you want. You know, and then choose your directory for export. And then you can either do an offline or an online render. I like choosing um, online, actually. Well, offline when I'm doing quick mix downs, but online if I'm doing a final mix down because I don't want any surprises. Let's do an offline bounce first. So let me choose that, and I'm going to have to blur this stuff now. So here's the offline export. Really quick, right? And then if I do this one, I'll call it all in line. It's going to play the audio. There you have it guys, that's Pro Tools. Now if Pro Tools crashes a lot, guess what the answer is to fix it? Trashing the preference file. Well, at that point if Pro Tools is crashing on you left and right, you may as well just trash the entire program by uninstalling it and using a real DAW. Even after learning how to use this again for the third time, I'm still not a fan of Pro Tools. And I know this is Pro Tools first. It's not the full version, but I'm just shaking my head. I don't I don't want to get into it. This tutorial's been long enough. I think you guys get the basic foundation of Pro Tools now. 
There's more to it than what I just showed you, but this should allow you to record, edit, and mix a pretty decent song or whatever you're recording and then mix it down. So I showed you all the basic steps, the basic overview. All the other stuff is just out of the realm of this tutorial. It was actually longer than I thought it would be, but hey, that's fine. You know, I wanted to show you guys exactly what you needed to know and not really much that you didn't need to know. So if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification button, and check out the, the Recording School playlist where I teach a lot more about audio from beginning level to advanced. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.